Hey, what up? This is uh, the Vulcan Report. You're listening to your man, the Vulcan. Been a minute since I've uh, done some some uh, videos because I've been busy trading and uh, attempting to generate profits for my clients. So that comes first. Ahead of videos, ahead of everything, comes fiduciary responsibility. The reason I'm doing this video right now is because, as you can see here, we had a nice parabolic bar in the Dow futures contract and then um, now we're kind of uh, pulling back a little bit almost to like a, almost a uh, near 50 percent retracement we're at like the 48 percentile right now something like that and it's yet to be seen if we're going to bounce from here or not but the thing I want to bring to your attention is not just the Dow let's take a look here at what has been going on in the markets period if you look, you'll see that the gold uh, has just really just, just blown right through everyone's uh, projections. You see this last resistance line here. We broke out, and now we're coming back to test that. Looks like we're going to build some support somewhere around the uh, 1393.40 range in the gold. And then I expect for us to uh, continue to shoot right up. Now we could overshoot that and go to 1364 and a half. That's right here around this trend line support right here. If we do that, then that that builds a nice solid base. What you really want to see, if you don't believe in the the rally, is you actually want to see it. You would have wanted to see it continue up for a few more days. That would have showed you that it was this you know over excitement and exuberance. But seeing a pullback. And building a base of support around a 1364 and a half level is frightening and quite scary because that means that you ain't seen nothing yet and that a major explosion parabolic upside reverse flash crash event is in order meaning that this the gold after it builds this base of support it's probably going to shoot to the moon and I would expect anything anywhere from two to three times the current price. That'll put us well over three to four thousand dollars an ounce. Um, there's a lot of uh, fear and pressure and momentum being built into this market, and I expect prices before the end of the year to definitely be well above fifteen hundred dollars easily, uh, possibly hitting sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars, maybe even twenty two hundred before the end of the year. And that's only a month away, or a month, a little bit, a month away, a little bit more than that. So, hold on to your hats. The scariest thing of all, it's not the Dow chart I showed you or the uh, gold chart, but rather the silver chart. As you can see here, the market broke out from its base here of $24.95. Now, we're beginning to pull back and we may even hit this $25 mark again building a base after this spike high right here today of 2934 that's frightening because if that happens we're looking at double the price here two to three times the price which will bring us to well above um, the, the, the 50 to 60 dollar range in silver by the end of the year all things being equal all things being the same that's where we're going all right, because fear momentum will build into it like an air pocket that explodes. Okay, that's what you can expect coming up. Doesn't matter why it's happening. The only thing that matters is that that is the price target right now, and the gold and the silver. If this was a if this was a head fake move, you would have expected it to continue a few more days and then see a, like a spike bar like this. But because of you, you see the way this uptrend channel is forming, this is this pullback is unfortunately uh, a bad thing for the economy because it's going to build a base and then it's going to explode so this is giving everyone one last chance to buy it once this base is formed and if you miss this one here this buy signal here you're not going to get another one I don't believe you're going to get another buy signal until sometime next year and that's just the way it's going to be if you thought it was scary buying up up to the last couple days you ain't seen nothing yet these type of parabolic events build up pressure over time. They're rare. They come like once once in a decade. And when they come, you got to get on them. And you got to get on them and ride them. Okay? 
timing is everything. Another thing I want to point out to you real quick is this euro. Look at the euro. That is not a good sign. Okay, that's a topping out. That's my definition of not a pullback but a dip. Look at that, three bars in a row. Erasing gains. Not building a base like you would here. It's erasing gains. It's coming down to here. And then it's going to go to 135. Not a good thing. Next test is the 133 and the 131 level. And we'll probably fall below that and go to the 120s. Which means that when you go and look at the dollar index, for whatever it means, look at the dollar powering up. It's about to break pulse wave here pretty soon. Once it gets to that $78 range, it's, it's pulse wave bound at that point. And we have, to, we have to do something about it. We can't ignore it. Okay, Pulse wave bound. That means the next target is the $80 range. And uh, once we break that resistance up there, trend line resistance, we begin a new uptrend in the dollar. Instead of dollar death, we get dollar strengthening for whatever reason and forever how long. These, um, these flash crash spikes here and here set a fake base, if you will. Sort of like signals that this is a bottom and they're ready to, to run it up. Printing presses can do that. Okay, Printing presses can do that. Talking about a cheap dollar while strengthening in it secretively. Okay, the printing press, as we know, is supposed to cheapen the dollar, but it's having an opposite effect because of the inflationary pressure. So here we go. Very weird stuff happening right now. So I expect some major, major reversal signals and um, some bot checks to come back. Some positive bot checks uh, by the close today. So heads up, everyone, on that. Then I want to end the video with what I believe I've been telling you guys for a long time. I made videos during the summer about it. I told you to get ready for Flash Crash 2.0. I also told you to get ready for the false flag stuff. I did the nuclear video months ago. Got a lot of flack from it. So if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. It's still there. I didn't take it down. Um... Dates and timing can be wrong, but it doesn't mean the event is not going to take place or some, some form of it. Uh, that missile being launched, okay, that was a real missile. That wasn't some um, weather balloon or some type of weather anomaly. That was a real ballistic type missile, all right? No matter what they say, that was a real missile that when it hits a target, it explodes. It blows up. It hurts things. It kills things, okay? It, it, it wasn't a missile that was pumped full of vaccines and um, you know vaccinations and immunizations against disease it was built to destroy not heal okay <laughs> so let's just get that right claiming no responsibility for the government to say they don't know what that was is basically again admitting to ignorance and admitting to failure so now anyone can just launch things in our skies we have no control over our skies sort of like the uh, excuse given during 9-11 Oh, we had no idea. So then that means that we're just vulnerable. Anyone at any time can fly a plane into a building or launch a missile from our soil. It wasn't a missile launched from a distant location to headed toward our shores. It was launched from our shores. So you're going to tell me that we don't know anything about that. And the launch was not so was not too far away from we uh from a military base. So but we don't know anything about that. So we don't know about the uh, the naval base shaped like a swastika located in California. We don't know anything about that, right? Okay, whatever. Then in addition to that, we need to deal with this bank thing that happened over the weekend. A lot of people wrote in and tweeted all over the internet about not being able to draw monies from all these different banks and stuff. So you, you're going to want to check that out too. Uh, you want to Google that and uh, find out what's going on. Gold and silver going parabolic up like they did wasn't just because of speculation it's because of fear fear is starting to creep into the markets and we have to deal with that okay we can't ignore that as I'm talking to you now we're now trading just 10 cents off of the lows of the day in silver and we are now um, down seven dollars a little over seven dollars in gold so again Gold and the stock market, gold, silver, and the stock market, as you can see, this is the Dow Industrial Average are moving together. Like I told you, for a time, 
you're going to see the indexes move with the metals and then after a while that process is going to decouple and you're going to see the indexes going one way and the metals going another so anyway um, you know do the knowledge to this stuff you know do your homework figure out what's going down and um, that's all I got right now um, that's all I got so remember to take what you can give nothing back I'm out. Peace.